Hello, hello, and welcome back. So Walt Disney actually had an earnings report and it looks like they're crashing estimates. They did very well. And so as expected, the company's aftermarket is up at about 7% right now. So I'm expecting it may actually be up to 160 or so when the market opens today. Now we want to be taking a closer look at the company, examine whether it's a potential buy for investors who are looking to, you know, to make some money in the long run. And uh, you will see here that the company has actually lost 22% of its value in the past year, which is to be expected, I guess, because a lot of the stocks have, have been going down for a while now. The company is not paying any dividends, but le let's take a look at the outstanding shares of the company, which is very, very interesting. And you will see here that for a while the company's shares ha count has been dropping, but now it's actually rising again. And that actually started happening back in 2019. From since then, the company's outstanding shares have grown to about like 30% or so, that is. And a pretty steep uh, increase over here, about uh, 300 million shares or so. Yeah, that's not great to see, obviously, but at least in the last year, or I guess uh, maybe a little bit more than a year, the company hasn't been print printing many shares, just a little bit over here. Again, not great to see, but not uh, terrible. So... Uh, the current P of the company is sitting at 132, which uh, points to a company that's uh, potentially very overvalued here. But the next 12-month projected one is at 36.2, which is obviously much, much better. company is sitting at uh, 268 market, uh, uh, billion dollars for a market cap. Uh, but let's take a closer look and see what that consists of. And uh, starting with the income statement here. Uh, we're always examining the income, income statement for the last about five to six years just to get the, the, recent, the most recent data. And um, as we're seeing here, the interesting thing about Disney is that it's not really growing. I mean, it's growing very, very little and then it has a negative growth in some years. So I'm guessing it's uh, sort of like a behemoth that stays at around the same level in terms of revenues. And you can kind of see that here, 2019 was actually 69 billion and currently it's 67 billion. So it was actually a little, a little bit of a drop over here. Now, uh, the year-over-year -year growth of the gross profit is similar as expected, but uh, the net income is what we are very, very interested in. And uh, you will see that there has been a little bit of a drop here, actually a massive drop from 9 billion to 12 over here, 11, and then uh, a loss and uh, 2 billion here and 2 billion here. Actually, that's the same. It's a 12-month rolling period. So $2 billion was, was the last uh, fiscal year, basically. Now, let's take a little bit of a closer look at the balance sheet of the company, see how much uh, they are having in terms of assets right now stored. And uh, the total current assets of the company seem to be increasing nicely over here, which is good to see. And uh, likewise, the total assets, the company has a lot of assets here, $203 billion. That's a lot. And uh, liabilities of $101 billion, that's also a lot in terms of liabilities. But they do have uh, twice as many assets, so, so that's very, very interesting. The total equity of the company, though, which is at the end the most important thing, is sitting at $102 billion. And uh, the company is increasing its uh, total equity overall, with a little bit of a decrease here. But overall, again, it's increasing its uh, total equity, which is good to see. Cash flow of the company, uh, we will see here that uh, the cash flow operation seems to be, seems to have suffered a little bit uh, since 2017, yet the company has been increasing its value, which is interesting. However, uh, you will notice that year over year, again, it looks like it's actually decreasing in terms of uh, the cash flow operating activities. You would kind of expect that though, due to the pandemic. So this kind of two years here, I mean, it's something to be expected again. Once the pandemic ends, I'm pretty sure people will, will want to go back to Disney and, uh, you know, watch, um, you know, watch all the Disney animations and all the Disney cartoons and all that, characters and all, and all that jazz in Disneyland, of course. And cash from investing, the company, you know, has increased, decreased, actually, his, it's investing a little bit, which again is, a little too, is to be expected uh, throughout this period. But what about the, the financing, which is interesting over here? we can see that the company actually got some debt, some long-term debt here. The company seems to be getting quite some debt, generally speaking. They actually got a lot here as well, but they did pay back a lot too. And so, generally speaking, I mean, I'm not too concerned about what I'm seeing here. company seems to be getting a little bit of debt, then 
you know, paying back some debt, not, uh, not much of a concern. Now, the free cash flow has suffered in the past couple of years again as expected. Previously, it used to be at around $8 billion, eight to, I guess, $8.7 to $10 billion. So, if we were to calculate this kind of free cash flow here, we're going to be, uh, you know, very, very limited in how we value our company just because these kinds of years are not expected to happen again for Walt Disney. And uh, I would expect a normal of around $8 billion, really. And if I want to be a little bit more conservative, which I will be for this calculation, just because we don't know how Walt Disney will come out of the pandemic. But um, still, uh, I will use $7 billion because using this kind of uh, estimates here for $2 billion and $1 billion, I think it's going to be very, very off for the upcoming year, really. And so again, I'm going to be a little bit a little bit conservative using an estimate of $7 billion of free cash flow a year, really. And this is what we're going to go for. So if we use a, um, a free cash flow estimate of $7 billion, we give it a multiple of, uh, let's say, 20, which again is a company that could potentially have a lower multiple here because it's not really growing that much. But I think I'm willing to pay for a company of uh, that caliber, really, especially when they are getting out of the pandemic. And so I'm willing to give it a multiple of 20, which means that we have a $7 billion free cash flow a year on average, and we multiply it by 20, we get a $140 billion of expected market cap that we are willing to pay for. Currently, however, we are sitting at $268 billion of a market cap, which is about double this value. And it's actually probably going to be more than double this value after, after the today's open, opening, really. And so we are looking at a company that uh, we would potentially want to get at about half its current price, really, in order to to get it at a multiple, at a free cash flow multiple of around 20. And um, at this point is uh, where you could justify paying a little bit more or, you know, potentially thinking to examine the free cash flow a little bit further and see maybe, maybe you can make a case for $9 billion of, of an average here, which would be the about average uh, of these two years here. And then you would go like 9 multiplied by 20 here. And in that case, you would get $180 billion of market cap, which is better, uh, but still a little bit far from what we would want to get over here. We would actually have to go some, somewhere around $9 billion of a, a cash flow, free cash flow a year, and then multiplied by a, a multiple of about 30 in order to be close to that market cap, actually. And still, we're going to be below that when the market opens to get today, I feel, but very, very close. So what is going on with um, uh, Walt Disney? Um, I mean, it's obviously a great company that's making a lot of money. And uh, the nice thing is they don't have a lot of debt when you compare it to the equity of the company. Uh, but the free cash flow here, which is interesting. Remember, the free cash flow of the company was sitting at um, eight, nine billion dollars here and then two billion here. But if we take a look at their balance sheet over here, you will notice that the total the total liabilities of the company are sitting at 100 billion more than 100 billion dollars and so if the company is making nine or seven billion dollars of free cash flow a year that's many many years to repay all the liabilities now don't get me wrong the company has a lot of equity too but i would like them to you know to start paying off some of the debt here <clears throat> just to, to to have a little bit of, le of a less debt of less debt when you compare that to their uh, free cash flow generation. That's what I would want to see from uh, Walt Disney. Of course, uh, debt can be a good thing and it's generally speaking a very good thing for companies that are making free cash flow. So I wouldn't be too worried, but yet, I do not like the fact that the company has $100 billion in uh, total liabilities and they're making eight to $9 billion of free cash flow before the pandemic. So that, that would take them 10 years back then. To pay back their debt um, and what about now when they're making two billion dollars it's much much less so there's a little bit of leverage here in terms of debt and you have to be uh, aware of that and the return on equity of the company is uh, pretty horrific here it's really bad it's very low um so that's uh, that's not great to see not get not getting a lot of return for the for your money here what about the multiples of the company, yeah, they're sitting at about the same level, it's actually more than uh, what they used to be in 2017, pre-pandemic or 2018. I guess you you could kind of expect that because there was a decrease in sales and that affects it. And uh, actually an increase in enterprise value that also affects it. And so 
what am I doing with um, well, this name here? So obviously the company is um, at a period where it's uh, more than likely going to be doing better very, very soon as the pandemic, as we exit the pandemic. However, the current value of the company is too high for my liking over here. Uh, and the fact that the company has been making less throughout the pandemic is also not great, again, because their free cash flow has dropped a little bit. Again, when you compare it to their total liabilities to two, and uh, if I were to enter this company, frankly speaking, I would like to get it at about uh, maybe maybe these levels over here, like uh, 87, maybe 80, as low as possible, of course, but about maybe about 80 uh, would be an interesting target here. Just because, again, I feel that the company is, con is going to continue growing, but in terms of uh, what, what they are making, and especially their current, the, their current uh, stock price, I feel that this is too expensive for me to enter right now. And again, it's going to be opening up even higher than what it is today. So that, bear that in mind too. So while I love the company and um, I may even visit Disneyland at some point, who knows, after the pandemic ends, I'm not in love with the price of the stock. And so I will have to avoid that for now just because I want to get more money, uh, more return on my investment in terms of the free cash flow that the company is making, which is um, the end all be all at the very end. It's what you need to be worried about. Um, you need to be paying um, for a stock and then that stock should be generating more, cash, more cash flow for you than what you paid. That's the whole point. Again, the company is great, but I would wait it out a little bit. Maybe we get a discount. I'd like a deep discount here though. So hope you enjoyed this video. If you did and you like these kinds of videos where we're talking about value and free cash flow and basically analyzing the company in terms of debt and its financials, we're trying to help you invest in a sensible manner. Please leave a like at the, at the video. That helps a lot. And uh, you may want to subscribe because there's going to be a lot more content. I'm creating a lot of content about the stock market very, very often, uh, if not daily, really. And um, I'd love to see you in our Discord channel too. You may want to take a look. Uh, you can find the link in the description box below in this video. And uh, if you do like these kinds of videos, you may want to take a look at uh, this one that I made earlier. And it's about Shopify. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.